Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a tour of my pencil case and what's inside. And I'm also going to be going over some things I use for my traditional art. So let's get started. Um, the first thing that I use is, well, should I go over? Okay. So what I actually use for my traditional art um, is, this is the sketchbook I use. It's the Canson Mixed Media uh, uh, paper <laughs> sketchbook. Um, I got it at Hobby Lobby, and um, I really like the paper quality of it. Uh, I can show some drawings I did in here. Um, it, it, it takes marker pretty well. Uh, this, it does bleed through, so I do have to use... Um, I use just a piece of paper, and I just put it over, and then I draw, and it catches all of the things on there. I also use it for swatches, but um, I really enjoy the paper quality. It's pretty... It's thick, but it's not like overly thick like Bristol, which is pretty nice, which I really like. And it also takes sketches pretty well, as you can see. It does smudge a little bit, but not too bad. If I'm not too heavy with my hand, then it doesn't smudge too bad. All right, so now we're gonna actually go over what's in my pencil case. Now my pencil case, my mom actually made for me. It's made out of it's made out of an old. Um, Sour Patch Kids uh, candy case, not sponsored. <laughs> um, so it, it's I really like it. It's lined. It's it's lined on the inside. It's very nice. It's nice and big. That way I can fit, jam pack everything <laughs> that I need. So. So here's all the things I use for my sketching and my. Uh, graphite drawings. I use this school pencil. Uh, it's probably a 2H. Um, I really don't know. It's a school pencil I got a couple of years ago. I usually art alternate using di different um, school pencils, but that's the one I'm currently using. And this is a fine touch uh, pencil crayon. It can be erased and it's in purple. So, uh, and be but because, and it is erasable. But because it's a cheap brand, it doesn't erase very well, and um, it doesn't sharpen very well. So I'm not really a big fan of these. I probably won't. If I continue using colored um, sketching pencils, I'm probably going to get a Prismacolor color raised pencil in the near future. And then this is what the, you know, I can get pretty dark lines and pretty light lines. And, and then this one is a 2B. I've been using this one more recently. I really like it for drawing. It's really heavy, so it... Helps me to have a lighter hand, which I've developed over the cap which I've developed over the past couple of years. And um, you can get some pretty light and dark lines with this, so I really like this one. And then um, for my eraser, it's just a standard eraser. Um, I have a ton of these all over the house. Um, and then I use these smudge smudge sticks. Uh, I like using these for I'm gonna do a little bit more. They smudge pretty well. They get a little bit dirty though. I'll have to uh, roughen these up. And I'm pretty sure you can use um, sandpaper. Sandpaper. Blah. Oh my gosh. I'm pretty. You. I'm. Blah. I'm sorry. I'm so tongue tied. I'm pretty sure you can use uh, sandpaper to get all that dust off of it. Or the. But I'm gonna have to see if it actually works. And then for my pencil sharpener, I have a UB pencil sharpener. This is probably oh gosh, I can't. this is probably the best pencil sharpener I've used so far. It's not it, it's nice. It, it can hold a pretty fair amount of um, pencil shavings, and it's got whoop, and it's got two holes in there, and um, it doesn't dull very easily, which I very much like. And then for my lining, I have a, now for my lining tools, I have, this is a Micron 050.20 mm. Uh, I haven't really been using this pretty recently, but I do use it every once in a while. It's pretty thin. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so, although I do like using it, I usually use a, um, a heavier one or a, thicker one but this is the one I have in here right now and then for these I have their Pigma 
they're, um, they're the same brand as Micron, but they're Pigma and they're brush markers, brush markers, brush pens. And it comes in fine, medium, and bold, um, which is FB, MB, and BB. So, um, crap. <laughs> so, I like these, but this one's starting to wear out. You really can't use it on its side because a lot of ink usually doesn't come out on the side. So I really have to use it on the top. And this is the medium. This one you can use on the side. You can get some pretty good line variation depending on how you hold it. I'm not very good at it though. And this is the bold one. It's almost the same tip as like a Copic marker. This one I'm not too good at. Too, too good at. But those are what I used to line with. And then for extras and just for fun, uh, I have these. I have this is my profile, um, I Papermate profile pen. Uh, it's in blue. It's running out. Um, I use it a little bit. Oh, I just did a cursive one there. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> it's kind of running out, but um, I still use it a little bit. And then I use these uh, Bic Bright Liners, Fluorescent Highlighters for just a little bit of pops of color. Sometimes I like, um, sometimes I just like to sketch in, um, some, you know, sometimes I like to give pops of color. Sometimes I just like to, um, uh, sketch in colors because sketching in colors I like to do and this is pretty much what I use in my digital art. I use a, um, a colored, uh, uh, really, uh, what's the word? I can't remember. It's kind of, it's a uh, really low opacity colored pen and so this kind of gives the same effect as I'm working in digital art so I like to use these to sketch um, when I'm just sketching not in my finished illustrations but if I'm just like doing concept sketches or whatever I like to use these um, the only one I really don't use is the this one which is super fluorescent which I could use in like radioactive things but I don't draw very many radioactive things <laughs> so that's all that's in my pencil case um, for markers, I use Copic markers, and this is uh, R39, which is a garnet. Um, I use a mix of Copic markers, Copic Chow markers, and Prismacolor markers. Um, both the new and the old ones this is an example of a newer one, and let's see if I get an old one for an example. Uh, here's an old one. Uh, I use, so this is the Copic sketch marker. It has a chisel tip and it has a, a like a paint brush kind of nib I can't remember but yeah brush nib and these are refillable unlike the Prismacolors so I really like these they blend very well um, the colors are very vibrant and um, they're very good you can layer them very well I really like using these um, they do bleed through so you have to use the paper uh, this is the Prismacolor Premier, which is the newer Prismacolor brand. Um, it has a bullet nib, and it has uh, and it has the brush nib. Uh, these are not refillable, and the colors aren't as vibrant, and they're still alcohol-based, so they do have so you can blend them. But I like the Copics a lot better. And then these are the Girl Prismacolors. They're a lot older. Um, I actually got them for my dad. And it has a bullet nib, and it has a chisel nib. And again, I like these. Um, they're not refillable. You know, they're not as high quality because they're older, um, and they're kind of worn out, and the colors are kind of fading on them. But they work. They work for what I need them for. Um, so that's what I use for markers. And then for adding glitter to my to my drawings, I use Vincastella brush mark brush pens. Uh, they come in a variety of different colors. I have the clear, the gold, the silver, the red, and the blue. Uh, the clear I like because you can put it on top of things and just make it shine. It really shows up in the light. Um, you can't really see it in a lot of my traditional drawings I post on Instagram because the, I can't get correct lighting for it, but this is the gold. And if you do get these, I, rem I recommend looking up a video on how to open them because they're pretty, they're not self-explanatory at all. <laughs> um, 
they're kind of difficult to open so it's really useful if you look up a video on how to open these and then this is the silver and then here's the blue huh? and here's the red and I believe they just came out with a white which I don't know I don't understand how it's any different from the from the clear but I guess it would the white would show up on colored objects and then for gel pens I use uh, in highlights I use jelly roll pens um, I use three or about four different versions um, I have four different versions of these Make sure I have all of them. Okay, so I use for my highlights, I use the Jelly Roll 06 in white, and this allows me to get pretty good highlights. And then I also have these are, I can't remember exactly what they're called, but they got a little shooting star on them, and they got glitter in them. So I like e using these for little pops of color. And then this is just the same as the white, but just they come in different colors. I like using these for writing and um, for smaller details. And then this is the Moonlight one, which it can appear on darker objects. So you can see that the blue is appearing on that black and on there. So that's what I use for highlights in my gel pens. And then, and then I actually do not have them with me right now. I use Prismacolor uh, color pencils for my color pencil drawings and for more uh, kind of texture details um so yeah that's pretty much everything I use for um my traditional art I also have a light box that I use but I don't use it very often but that's pretty much everything I use for traditional art I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope this is helpful in some way um if you have any questions please let me know I'd be happy to answer them if you have any questions about my uh what I use to draw um for digital art um and how I make my videos, it'll be in the description below. But if you have any questions about traditional art or just art in general, let me know and I'll do my best to answer them. I love talking to you guys. So um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, my name is Star and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.